Welcome to Recovering Addict. We got a new little view for you, and I'm LT, and I'm an alcoholic addict. How is everybody today? I'm an addict. She's a co-addict. We've been there, done that. We've lived the life of addiction and fights and pain and misery and children and hangovers and all that stuff, work and shame and embarrassment. Two times in my life, I hit rock bottom, early 2000s, super duper meth addiction tweaker. Uh, and in uh, my late 30s, I became a raging, belligerent, blackout drunk. Amanda Grubbs, thank you so much for the super sticker. Thank you very much. So much appreciated. Every time you guys support us, it just it's awesome. You believe in what we're doing and know that we're here and you guys are making it happen. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. I can't say thank you enough. <laughs> Uh, we have a pretty awesome show for you tonight. We will be going through the introduction of our new book, It Will Never Happen to Me. And I know that going through AA did win the votes barely, barely on Facebook group. But the fleece brought it up to me. She's like, hey, you've been telling everybody you're going through. It'll never happen to me. Imagine there's people out there that have bought the book that probably want to go through that book. So I was like, dang it. I had to suck in my feelings and what I want to do. And do the right thing. And so since people did, actually a lot of people purchased this book that we could go through it together, which is awesome. Um, I decided to stick to the plan. And just like my addict mind, I always wanted, I, I'm, I'm going to do one thing. Oh, wait, no, let's go do another squirrel. Burr. That's, you know, that's the addict in me. Goodness gracious. But yeah, we got a great show. This book is going to be amazing. It's like kind of heart wrenching. I didn't realize it was going to be so emotional. And there's a little part in it, and I'll read it to you here in a little bit, but it was like, eh, you're probably going to feel some feelings. And if you do start feeling some feelings as we go through this, because it's talking about family addiction, and that's what Fleece and I started this live stream for, was support, obviously, because everything was shut down, but to break the stigma about families and that we can recover together. Because, you know, this is kind of a time, Fleece, and I get to get stuff off our chest and let you guys realize that, hey, we're out there. There's lots of us in the family that are re struggling. And this is really going to touch on some maybe childhood issues you had. Um, and then it's going to kind of give us some introspective to maybe what your children have had to live through in your addiction. And so it's not going to be an easy book to go through as far as that goes, but it's a good thing. We got to attack these feelings head on. And, and she even suggests in this book, uh, once you start feeling this stuff we're about to go through, get it off your chest whatever you're feeling, you know, find your support system, find your sponsor and talk about it. Talk about what you're going to go through, what you went through and all of that stuff. But we're really glad you're here and I'm excited to go through this book. I'm going to learn a ton. It will never happen to me growing up with addiction as youngsters, adolescents and adults. And that being said, I'm going to let Flea say hi to everybody up in this chat. Yeah, our camera. So our camera used to be up and over, but I moved some tables out of the way. Now I got it here. You guys are a little more level with us. Amanda. Yeah. Thanks for the super. Peter. Mr. Teeter. Love that dude. Christine. Oh, look what she said, too. I'm going to go shut off the air conditioning. Christine said, what? Oh, yeah. John B. Good evening, morning, afternoon, whatever. If you're listening to this on replay. Yeah, I always replay folk teller. It's called Happy Hour Folk Teller. Lee, what is up? And we have Justin. Just to say, guys, love the work you guys are doing. I sent it to my ex wife and hope she will follow along. Yeah, we're praying for you. I know how it is, and I'm, I'm I love your pat or not. I don't even know how to describe, but I mean, your uh, your empathy, your empathy towards her. That's that's beautiful, brother. Thank you. Way to lead by example. Link wants to show off his new haircut. He uh, went and got a perm today. <laughs> it looks so good. Oh, hi, Annie. I didn't see you there. 
Come here. Come over here and show him your head. <laughs> it's like Amos is back. <laughs> you can't hear Felice? Oh, yeah. Let me start over. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I had it turned off for the Saturday podcast. I forgot. Good thing I have like the up to date comments down here. We wouldn't known for another 10 minutes. I know. <laughs> That's okay. Can you hear me now? And Justin said, no, thank you. I found it f- found uh, from Put the Shovel Down. That's awesome. Thank you, Amber. Oh, Amber is amazing. I love Amber no matter, from Put the well, Shovel Down. Please let me say it's because of people like you. Changes made our lives safe. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Thank you so much. I pre- That encourages us that what we're doing is actually helping people. Knowing that we are affecting lives, you know, because of our experience and the crap we had to go through. Uh, it, it strengthens our recovery a hundred percent. Thank you, brother. Keep us updated on your wife. I'm curious yeah, to know how updated. that all goes. The mayor's daughter. Hello. What up, Mo? Aaron, we love you. Amanda, thanks for the super sticker. Heck yeah, Amanda, coming through with the super sticker. Thank you so much. Mic check, mic check, mic check. <laughs> hey, Misty. Whoa, look at this guy. Hey, what up? One year. Woo-hoo, One year and two girl, days. Deanna. Proud of you. Oh, it's a girl. My bad. I thought I said Dean for some reason. <laughs> it's just a generic term. Guys, My what bad. Up, guys? My bad. Okay. I say like I said brother. Uh, sister. Good job, sister. That is freaking awesome. You can yell at me if you want in the chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Brandon Lowe. Hello, Mr. Lowe. And let's see. Who did I miss? I got y'all. I got y'all. Petey. Petey. Petey what's house. up, brother? Carmen. Did we drop those in the mail? They're going to the mail tomorrow after I get off work. All your bookmarks. All the bookmarks will be in the mail tomorrow. Because I'm not sure if I can just mail a letter to Canada. So oh, yeah, except for <laughs> you, Canada. So I need, I'm going to go into the post office and do it tomorrow after I get off work. So, yes. Oh, Venus. Hello. You're a new name. Great job to y'all. Keep it up and God bless. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Tell us about yourself too. Yeah, please do. Hey, Lish. Lish, what's going on? Bobby. Bob in the house. Been a while. How's it going, brother? Sean Kelso, what is up? I saw my mom in there too. Hi, mama. Oh, is this all of the... Do you want to swing (laughs) over your mic to Fleece, please? (laughs) There they are. See, 10 minutes later, (laughs) I'd still be chatting and nobody would be able to hear me. This is my mommy. I love you, mama. Hey, Deb. Terrence. Hey, Terrence. Oh, sweet. So your house. We aren't together, but she always has a part of me with her. The fight isn't over until it has to be. Man, that's a fighter. Good attitude. Yeah, stick with it. She'll need that support when she comes around. Look at Merck beat you. Ah, thanks for the help, Merck. <laughs> I always count on you. He got, he's got my back. Hello, Facebook user. Gene, what's going on? Jean Lee. Cheers. Better, Everybody better, says good job. Tracy. Better speed it up, man. I'm, I'm, oh, and we got to say, hey, David, thank you so much for the patron support. We appreciate that so much. Uh, David, everybody give him a thank you and a shout out. He's our new patron of the of this month. Thank you so much. What up, Jean? Jean Costin Jr. Did you say hi to Tracy? I did. All right. And Ooh. Naomi. 94 days for Naomi. Naomi's got 94. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of struggling. I know. I know Especially what you're going all through. All the things going on in your house. think about what happened. Like, just close your eyes for a minute and go the last three months. And you think about the news, the Facebook feeds, the virus, the riots, the this, the that. Plus, you states over. Good job. Proud of you. Bob, I got some good Alan on type news. I gave the princess the boot. All her stuff is in storage. <laughs> Alan on type news. Has been in the works <laughs> for a couple weeks. I got her out of the Sima trailer. The trailer is for sale. Nice, man. Way to set some boundaries and put your foot down and let her experience the consequences of what she's doing. Yeah. Hopefully, it'll bring her to her senses and she'll ask for help. Woo, Canada. Oh, Canada. <laughs> He's got 30 days. First time in 35 years. Wow. That is. Sean? Oh, yeah. Dang. He's in his program. Is he still doing he's, good in his He's program? out. That's why I said look at her comment. You probably passed it on there. Too. Oh, I did miss it. 
he's out 30 days. Awesome. Thank you, David. Yeah. Keep us updated. Hopefully you're watching brother and no, I've been there too. <laughs> I've hit that 35 day mark and I had to go to an IOP for five months. And technically I'm still in IOP because I joined soar. I'm going through their whole and that's why I remember we slowed the streams down to three days a week instead of every night because I'm actually in another IOP just to further my recovery, strengthen my recovery, and to know this program because SOAR, the School of Addiction Recovery and Recovering Addict, we have married our nonprofits and uh -huh. we are working together and we're just, we're just, we have the same passion, help people and move that direction and whatever happens, happens. I love it. Joe E, what's up, what brother? What's up, Joe E? And Cherie, we love you. Yep, it was me and the ladies today. Yeah, Merck, where were you? I was the only dude in the house. Who oh, did this? We're going to shout out Marilyn. Marilyn. Thank Aww. you so much, Marilyn. Thank you for helping us recovery. You're the best. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Cool. Very awesome. All right, let's shout out. Anchored Hearts, Fountain House, much love from the Sawyer House. Shout out to the ladies here, Darcel T, Tracy Silversmith, Hovel, Candace, Gold Tooth, Harvey. Harvey. I'm so proud of y'all. I also got 94, 94. days out of Holy Carmen. cow, that's great. Keep up, ladies. You guys are killing it. Good job. Killing it in recovery. Yes. I love Jeanette, it. Jeanette, hello. Jeanette, how are you doing? So Mark, cool. you're burnt like toast. We're all burnt like toast too. Yeah, we are too. The well, light doesn't show it. But let's see. That's my tattoo. You can't tell. Ah, the microphone's in the way. <laughs> Just take my word. I'm burnt. <laughs> <laughs> Millie's way burnt. Yeah. Man, we got burnt that. What was that? Friday morning. So we went Friday morning. We went to Pine View, and I wanted to go while it was cool because if it gets above 90 degrees, 89 degrees, I hate it. I can't stand it. So we're in the sun from 69 to 85 degree weather all day so it feels good it's just warm and it's deceiving because you still get freaking burnt yeah it's like cloudy days yeah it's like a cloudy day <laughs> it's a sneaking burn yeah please smash that like button y'all thanks mr teeter thank you teeter thank you thank you and let's get some share squads up in here huh Ooh, share squad. oh antoine if you're watching we need yes. your address we got everybody's address but yours and i looked everywhere Anywhere somebody could have posted, I looked and yeah. I, you're the only one. If you're watching, I hope you are. Antoine, send us an email. And anybody for that matter can send us an email here at recoveringaddict8 at gmail.com if you just want to chit chat. And if you go to our website, uh, recoveringaddict.org, my phone number is all over that if you just want to talk. Yep. And speaking of the website, our stuff has shipped. I'm just waiting for it to make it to my door. Our Hats, and shirts, and hoodies. Yep, yep, yep. Hoodies, just in time for Hoodies winter. go up to 3X. 3X, just my size. Yep. Heck hey, yeah. guys, 60 days out of prison. Well, hello, nice. 60 days out of prison Facebook user. Right on. So if you notice your name popped up as Facebook user, if you want StreamYard to allow your name, because you are in our private group and we are uh honoring your anonymity and if you want to keep it that way we'll keep it that way but if you want people to see your name you can either jump over to youtube the facebook page or just go up to where it says see more and allow Streamyard to use your name so it's up to you either way just letting you know why it's like that christine, and i'm glad you're here glad you're watching christine with the share squad christine with the share squad yay hoodies <laughs> yeah. i'm excited for the hoodies covering too. addict hoodies what did you put on the back is there anything on the back or no we recover better together Oh, we recover. Okay. The shirts are going to, I'm excited to wear one of the shirts. It says, do not put yourself in a high risk situation. Yeah. <laughs> I love that part. I love it. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do next. Are we supposed to go into this book now? I think it is. It's 815 actually. No. Did you read your, your. Nope. We're going to the discord. We got a question from discord. It's up oh, on the do? big screen. Yeah. It's Tita. All right. This is what time it is. Our very own lovely Michael Teeter says, my question is twofold. One is, we're talking about it, can never happen to me. What happens to the ones who don't drink because they saw parents drink? And two, the children thinks it's normal to drink like that. 
Uh, we're definitely going to get into that in this book. Um, but I've, from what I've read and what I've seen, sometimes the children be, create a codependency about their feelings and actions in defense to the parent's behavior. And they become co-addicts and then they grow up. And usually a lot of times they'll marry into a, they'll get into a relationship with somebody else in the same abusive type relationship. A lot of times if they were beat, they'll marry somebody that beats them. And sometimes they'll get into a relationship with an addict and continue that co-addiction because it's just something built inside them as early as childhood. We're definitely going to get into that. And then thinks it's normal to drink like that. I don't know. I thought it was normal. I thought it was normal to smoke in the house and I thought it was normal to get drunk and it was fun, you know, cause my, the way that I was raised. And it was funny when I think about the cigarette part is I grew up sitting next to my grandma as she's smoking a cigarette. I remember liking to, I liked the noise of the cigarette going, I could hear it every time. And I like, and I never smelled it. I didn't realize how bad I stunk. <laughs> I could imagine now what my teacher's, and stuff outside of the house thought when I walked up like, Oh, this poor kid, <laughs> he's the one that lives in smoke. And then my one friend across the street, his parents were pretty, uh, clean and healthy. They didn't drink, they didn't smoke or nothing. And we'd go to his house all the time and play in his bedroom. But when we came over to my house, he wouldn't go inside. He'd stay on the porch. He's like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. And it never hit me as to why he stayed on the porch or either his parents said, don't go in there. It stinks and you're going to get cancer. Or he didn't like the smell of it either. But we had ashtrays all over the house with cigarette butts. That's how I, you know, started smoking. I don't know. It just desensitizes you as a kid and it gives you, you know, what, what did we read in the addictive personality book? It talked about if you live in a, in a, in a polluted environment, you're more likely to get, you know, cancer or, you know, lung disease. If you're in a like LA or New York, where it's a highly, more highly dense pollution air you're going to get, you know, so that that same type analogy applies to growing up into the addictive family, I believe. Oh, 32 more comments. Where do we go? Polly Pinch. In the house. Been waiting for your call, brother. Where you at? We miss you too, brother. How you doing? Let us know. Arena's up in here. Hey, Raina. I love you. All right. So let's get into our book. I'm excited for this one. It's called It'll Never Happen to Be by Claudia Black. If you guys haven't purchased it, it there is links in the description. Um, but I want to read to you a little bit about who Claudia is. Uh, Claudia Black. She's a renowned addiction author, speaker, and trainer internationally recognized for her pioneering and contemporary work with family systems and addictive disorders. Uh, Claudia designs and presents training workshops and seminars to professional audiences in the field of family services, mental health, addiction, and correction services as well. As speaking in public forums about addiction and recovery, she speaks to thousands of people every year. So since 1970, Claudia's work has encompassed the impact of addiction on young and adult children. She offers models of intervention and treatment related to family violence, multiple addiction, relapse, anger, depression, and women's issues. Her writings and teachings have become a standard in the field of addiction. This lady knows what she's talking about. Claudia holds a doctorate of philosophy. Yeah, philosophy. Those who come to the Sunday night six o'clock Zoom know a little bit about philosophy now. She holds a doctorate in philosophy and psychology, social psychology, from Columbia Pacific University. Uh, and a Bachelor of Arts degree in social welfare from the University of Washington. Claudia is a clinical architect in the Claudia Black Center for Young Adults. I mean, she's just got everything. She's, she's got her hand in anything and everything addiction and treatment related. The Meadows Treatment Center in Arizona, National Association of Children of Alcoholics, Advisory Council to the Moyer Foundation and its developments of Camp uh, Mariposa, a camp for children impacted by addiction. She's awesome, y'all. Uh, her workshops have been presented to an extraordinarily wide array of audiences, including military academics, prison systems, uh, medical schools, extensive mental health and addiction programs. Claudia has extensive multicultural experience with agencies and audiences in Mexico, Japan, Brazil, Australia, Scotland, Iceland, Germany, England, and last but not least, Canada. 
Many of her books and videos have been translated and published abroad. This book we're about to go through right now have has more than 2 million copies have been sold of this. So this is a, if you haven't heard of it, I would suggest grabbing it. And I think we should take our time and move through this one very slow because I believe it is going to have a ton to offer. I know this is an, uh, a revised edition, I believe, because she keeps referring to it in the, uh, in the uh, introduction about it being revisited and added to. So there's, there's updated information in here, but man, chapter six is family violence, fueling addiction, the responsible, the responsible child strengths and defects. It's going to, it's going to touch on a lot of good stuff. And so I'm excited to get into this one. Yeah. And welcome Soupy and Jacqueline. Glad you're here. Good night. Soupy's Aaron. in the house. Sweet. If Aaron's going to asleep. sleep. Oh yeah, she works hard. Eyes are getting heavy. <laughs> Good night, Aaron. So cool, so cool. Misty, how's it going? Oh, she wrote this to Jack, who she dearly loves. Oh, that's sweet. Oh yeah, I want, oh, I actually wrote it down. Never mind. Okay. So in the preface, in the preface, it says I spent my whole life making sure I didn't end up like my dad. And now the only difference between my dad and me is that my dad died from his alcoholism and I don't have to die from mine. It'll never happen to me, right? She says, as you read this. Oh, what Paul is it? Hey, he's working on some regrets. He says, I'll get there. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Everyone that I said I would call and didn't. No worries, Please brother. Please don't take it personal. I'm just down on myself, and I'm sure that we've all been there. Absolutely, brother. I this shoe too you. shall pass. We miss you too. Let's talk about it. I'd love to talk about it. <clears throat> Norm or Justin? This is your. This is for you, Polly. But as normal as is regret and try not to let it weigh you down. Yeah, you can't change the past, but you can wake up every day and try to be better than you were. Amen, Justin. Amen. Thanks for the support. That's awesome. That's what community is about, talking to each other like that. I love it. <laughs> Soupy's PC's giving him a <laughs> He can't get rid of the pop-up blocking his volume. <laughs> <laughs> Usually technology. a good right hook and then maybe a stomp and a pound. That, that fixes things for me. If it ain't going to work. It ain't ever going to work again after it gets, I get through with it. All right. So she says this in the preface. I underlined it. I underlined it. it, it. It's on XI. If you're following along at the bottom of the page, it says, as you read, do so to understand, not to feel guilt or blame. This book is meant to offer a foundation for understanding what occurred growing up in an addictive family and to offer hope for recovery. So as you read this, we're doing this to understand, not to feel guilt or blame. Because you may, we may come across from, I, I take that sentence to mean we may come across some stuff that you haven't thought about yet. And then you're going to reanalyze your childhood and could possibly start a resentment or blame. And we don't want to go there, she says. She says, we just want to understand. This book is meant to offer a foundation for understanding what occurred growing up in an addictive family and to offer hope for recovery. And hopefully you'll have a paradigm shift of what uh, maybe you're putting what I put my kids through and maybe y'all could relate as well. She said XO. <laughs> Sheree. Oh, love you, Sheree. <laughs> Hashtag Sheree is awesome. So true, Joey. We can only change the past. We can't, we cannot change the past. We can only work on the future. I love that. And I'm not holding, to, amen, bro. Good stuff. Yeah, I like that. And towards the end of the preface, she says, many readers will find it will never happen to me. A catalyst that provokes a multitude of feelings. Listen to this. Many readers who read this book may find it as a catalyst that provoke a multitude of feelings. These feelings may be painful, but she says, I urge you, share your feelings. What do we talk about in our book here, Staying Sober? Get it off your chest, right? Find a support system. Join us on Discord and jump into a voice chat if you need to. 
Talk about it to people who are not going to criticize, judge you, or minimize. No matter how bad it feels, no matter how small you think the hurt is, talk about it. Because we're not going to minimize it either. And we're going to help support you through that. So if you start feeling these types of feelings as we go through this book, make sure you reach out to your support system. It says, for too long, family members have suffered in silence. Then she goes through a bunch of acknowledgments. We won't get into those. But then the introduction hits. Oh, there's a special picture for Felice. Let's see what it is. <laughs> it's because Des isn't here to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> I got to share that one. Awesome. I got to sh- screen share that one. See, I get, oh, and then I removed it. And then I added it. <laughs> look at that, y'all. Yummy. That is from Cherie. Mm, look, at, look at these. Donuts. I love the cup. <laughs> That's awesome. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, Cherie. Great picture. <laughs> Danny J, what's going on, Dana? Uh, Bob found his book. Danny, I would go with Danny. Danny, okay, guys, I think I'm I figured out how to do up. this. It looks like you did, and we're glad you're here. Bob said he found his book. It was buried, buried in the van from that trip to Wyoming. Ugh, the very back of the van, under a tote. Hopefully, it's not hot. See, that's what I hate about the heat. It could be, you could be in the house chilling. You just took a shower. You're cool, but you got to go find something in the car, right? So you go in the car and the dang books in the back seat. Now you got to crawl through the back and dig under something. By the time you get out, you're dripping in sweat and have to take another shower. <laughs> just too many showers. Stupid heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the mayor daughter's niece. How, how do I say oh, her name better? Very cool. Is it Danny? Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. Go on with Danny. I'm sorry. Your name's Danny now. Josh says, got a little story for you from tonight, if and when we get a chance. What kind of story, brother? Ooh, we like stories. Cute little dog picture. Yes, Danny. Okay, cool. I just don't want to screw it up. I, I've screwed up my whole life, man. <laughs> I don't want <laughs> to do it no do more. It <laughs> well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. So glad you're here. Mayor's daughter, thank you. So while hundreds of thousands of people are in recovery from chemical dependency, codependency, and adult child issues, our communities continue to be impacted by addiction. Heroin, cocaine, crystal methamphetamine, and marijuana. Use is rampant through our communities, but historically, what is the number one abused drug? Drop it in the comments. What do you guys think? Yeah, story time. What is the story? I don't know. Mr. Beam knows. How do I stop sharing? I forgot how to stop screen sharing. Not sure. Is he gonna hit us with it? People gonna people gonna hit us with the number one used drug? Number one abused drug. Have what is it? Idea. What tis it? I'll give you a hint. It starts with an A. <laughs> Christine, you're right. Adderall. <laughs> So alcohol is historically the number one abused drug. It says today compared to the time of writing the first edition. So yeah, see, this is the second edition. We seldom refer to someone as an alcoholic. You can recognize that if people are addicted, they are often addicted to more than one substance, right? So today compared to the time of writing this first edition. So the first edition was written a while <laughs> not, back. Not Advil. A- Advil. I- <laughs> right here i'm like ow i need some advil (laughs) booze caffeine it's alcohol it's alcohol so we seldom refer to somebody as alcoholic and recognize that if people are addicted they are often addicted to more than one substance i was alcohol meth and weed we use phrases like chemically dependent or addict to recognize that irrespective of the predominant substance addiction, they need to refrain from the use of alcohol and other drugs. This has occurred for two reasons. The first being it was recognized that many alcoholics were actively addicted to at least one other substance. Alcoholics, raise your hand if you were addicted to another substance. Me. 
Secondly, that even if they did not show the signs of a second addiction, they needed to refrain from the use of other substances because those other substances would often lead them to relapse in their alcoholism or to engage in a second addiction. For this reason, the words alcoholic. Now listen to this. She's just kind of clarifying what we can expect from the rest of the book when she inter changeably uses these words. For this reason, the word alcoholic, addict, and chemically dependent will be used interchangeably throughout this book. And that's a huge reason right there why if you are only an alcoholic and have never been dependent on anything else and you've quit and you're like, yeah, I could try a gummy with some THC in it. It could lead you back to alcoholism or possibly lead you into uh, another addiction, which is not good. And if you've had an alcoholic addiction that you've had to battle to overcome, then more than likely you have an addict mentality and an ad addict allergy to substances. And it definitely will come back to bite you in the butt. Want to read Josh's Teeter. story? Yeah. Here we go. Ooh, I can't even sit up tall enough. How are you? You can see my eyebrows. I'm trying to read it. I got the rock eyebrow. Can't tell. Okay. So I chair at my AA meeting on Sunday night. And when we were doing introduction, and there was someone that had got two months and I got to give him his chip. Yeah. And it was absolutely amazing to yes. share a moment with someone with two months. And I could just remember when I was there. Then after that, someone popped off with that. They had went back out and gave him another 24 hour coin. And he told me that he wanted what I had. And it was amazing feeling. It's awesome to see how the program works. Sorry, that beautiful all. those are the stories we like to hear no Josh. dude that is exactly what the program's about you know what i mean you yeah sharing those moments with your community now you have extra strength in your recovery to win the next battle that's coming it's inevitable it's coming and now you can you know you hold on to those moments to get that extra strength and it's awesome i i heard somebody get yelled at for chips i don't know why that made me think of this but it did uh one guy in our group at my old IOP was like, we're like, go get your chip. No, I don't like getting chips. I don't care about having a chip. And then finally some old timer was like, dude, you get up there, you get the chip, whether you like it or not, because somebody in the crowd could see you getting a chip and get strength and courage from watching what you just did. So I don't know why it reminded me that, but it did. So if you're not one to go get chips from AA or NA, know that just by the fact that you walking up and grabbing a chip and getting a hug and maybe saying, Hey, all I got to say is I worked my program and sit down that could inspire hope in somebody. That's the whole point of us addicts, right? Step 12. We've uh, had a spiritual awakening. We carry this to other alcoholics, right? That are in need or addicts. All we do is spread hope. Our lives now are living hope. People can look at us and you remember that time of despair and hopelessness you went through? I know. I, I remember complete hopelessness. I even went to an AA meeting and still came out somewhat hopelessness, but the seeds were planted. I didn't know it. But we are beacons of hope for other addicts who suffer. So let your light shine, y'all. That's, that's what I'm trying to say there. Uh, quick update for Soupy. We are reading from It Will Never Happen to Me by Claudia Black. Boom. Josh says, I love it. And yes, that is a fact. It shows people that it works. Yes. Good job, Amen. Josh. Amen. Uh, you'll get it. You'll get a chip when the COVID's over, Teeter. Probably about five of them. Yeah, you'll get one. No worries. So when these terms terms are used in this book, it's referring to people who have neither the ability to consistent. Okay, is this any of you? So when we're using those terms, alcoholic, addict, chemically dependent, we're using these terms within the book. They're referring to people who have neither the ability to consistently control their drinking or using, nor the capability to predict their behavior once they start to drink or use. That was me. Their drinking or using causes problems in major areas of their lives, and yet they continue to do so. <laughs> that crap's causing major problems in your life, but yet we continue to do so. That's who we're talking about. This is a person who has developed a psychological dependency on a substance coupled with a psychological addiction. 
It is someone who has experienced a change in tolerance to alcohol and drugs and needs to drink or use more to acquire the desired effect. Their need to drink or use becomes greater and greater and a greater preoccupation in their lives. At one time in their lives, they had the ability to choose to drink or to use. In time, it became not a matter of choice, but compulsion. We're talking about alcoholics and addicts, people like me. And she's clarifying that because the, the big book does say the average temperate drinker. We're not talking about them. We're talking about people who abuse alcohol, who just like Jonathan said, or Jonathan, Michael, uh, Michael says from him to the rock, he says, I'm just like you. I drank and used. I woke up the next day and promised I'd never do it again and drank and used it that night. Share squad. Thanks, Adrian. Adrian. Um, a lot. <laughs> she's, what? she's share squatted a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. In Appreciate the mail tomorrow, it. we got some things coming for you. So many people are confused about chemical dependency. What page in the book? Uh, right now we are on page two. Hey. Left hand side. If you look at my book, it's underlined and stuff. Eh. You'll never know. It's just blurry white stuff. You'll never know. <laughs> I do got that book. <laughs> so, Soupy, what we're doing, we're just reading through the introduction today. I like to read a few sentences and then chit chat about it, read a few more and chit chat about it. Sometimes I skip around, sometimes I skip whole pages if I don't feel like it's in the flow of our show. But uh, no, right no. now, we're at the top of page two, and I really just want to read through this because what we're doing is identifying and introducing what addict we're talking about, what chemical dependency is, and then we're going to look at the commonalities and co-addiction, and then after co-addiction, we're going to look at children, and then after we read that, I want to get into chapter one. There's three vignettes, and I'll explain what that means, and I'm going to read those, and those may hit home. Um but right now, the top of page two, many people are confused about chemical dependency because there is no one specific pattern of behavior. Addicts differ in their styles of drinking and using, and the consequences of addiction widely vary. Some drink daily, others in episodic patterns. Some stay dry for intervals between binges. Some drink enormous quantities of alcohol and use other drugs. That was me. Um while others do not. Some drink only beer, some drink only wine, some drink hard liquor. Still, others will drink a wide variety of alcohol. So although addiction appears very early in the lives of some people, sometimes people it takes years to develop. I didn't become an alcoholic until I was in my early mid-30s. Uh, some claim to have started drinking addictively from their first drink, and many others report that they drink for years before crossing over that invisible line, right? Invisible line that separates social drinking from the addictive thinking. Now listen to this. So while the focus of this book will remain on homes where alcohol is the primary drug, it is my hope that the reader will see similarities in other substance abusing families. The commonalities will be in living with extremes, living with the unknown or living with fear. It is the living in a system where the addiction has become central to the family and needs of the individual family members to become secondary to the needs of the addicted and his or her addiction. So right after this, we are going to look at the commonalities because all drug use from alcohol, weed to cocaine, meth, crack, there's commonalities because it's an addiction, right? Who cares what the substance is? So we're going to look at that right after we hear our word quote of the day <laughs> good evening my recovering addict family how is everyone doing awesome yay how are you guys felice i wanted i wanted to tell me. you felice that some people out here in vegas they watch and my girlfriend she called me courtney and she said oh my gosh i love watching your brother and his wife it's so <laughs> cool he he found his person and she found his person they're each other's people and i was like <laughs> they are they're so cute but then they keep calling lt my brother i'm like i'll take it that's my brother <laughs> we look <That's> like <laughs> uh, that makes us sisters yay <laughs> yes we are <laughs> i love you guys you guys, uh, hey, I was thinking about them too. 
I was thinking yeah. about the weavers, okay? Me and you being okay. weavers, right? Yep. We're short, we're like stocky and heavy, right? Yep. I'm hairy. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and I've been watching this show, The Vikings. And so I started doing a bunch of research on like our last name and our, and I'm the only weaver that doesn't have blue eyes. I got my green eyes from my mom, I guess. That's right. Um, yes, you are. But I think, Cassie, I think we're Vikings. I think we're I think badass we are. Norse Vikings. Yeah, and and we got that roar too. So that's Girl, definitely yeah. Vikings we'll too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take you down. We let the other village know what's up with us, so they don't mess with us, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was like a whole epiphany last night. <laughs> oh, he wants to show you his curly hair. Oh my! Let me see. Come closer. How'd that happen? <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. You're adorable. Hi, sweet Mailey Mail. How are you? Good. Two thumbs up. Beautiful. You're beautiful. I love you guys. Love you too. Yay. I'm doing a photo shoot, so sorry I'm all crazy right now. And I have my quote, though. So I'm ready. Okay. If you do what you always did, you will get what you always got. That was anonymous. Ding. Ding. <laughs> Ding. Yay. All right, Millie, you guys do it with me too. Come on. Linky. All right. Bring it together and continue to spread that love. <laughs> Yay. Mm, I All love right, you love guys you. so much. Love Bye you. Now. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Great. That's what's going to happen. Great coat. Get what you always got. <laughs> Look about Cassie live. How awesome is that? <laughs> Love when Cassie's live. <laughs> Me too. It's fun. Sure Although I do like the, stuff. I like that other stuff too. I like the ding and all that stuff. Yeah, I like I like both. Both. I want both. I saw a comment I wanted to look at. Tell Sheree thank you. She called it. Oh, damn it. Oh well. What was oh, it? I now I want to know what it was. It's right here. No, it's not. There it is. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. Is that, was that it? Yeah, that was it. Okay. okay. So commonalities, there's commonalities, right? Addiction is addiction is addiction, addiction. We did too. Awesomeness. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Okay. So since, and I really want to hit this commonalities because I'm going to hit a point one through six. And if you're following along, it's on page two and three. I mean, it's almost a test. If you pass this test, you're an addict. <laughs> and I imagine all of us are since we're here. Um, and if you're watching the digital bushes because you're worried about a loved one, this may help you think about them too. Hello, bush people. The digital bush people. We should find a name for them. Digital bush dwellers. We need to come up with a special. The indigenous and digital bush dwellers. All right. I need y'all <laughs> to help me with this one. There's people that watch this, that hide in the bushes. There's people on the Facebook group that never comment. They only watch, right? There's people in Discord that only read the stuff. They're digital bush dwellers. What do we call those? Like, can we... Stalkers. Best name wins. Okay, best name wins. <laughs> <laughs> so since the original writing of this book, blah, 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 because she wrote it a while ago. So they, they recognize that, that it's referred to as a process of addiction. And the fact that both substances... And process addictions often coexist and may be interrelated. Such addictions would include gambling, spending, eating disorders, sex, love, relationships, and addiction, right? The commonalities across addictive disorders are. Now tell me if y'all pass this. Trolls, I like trolls. That's good. <laughs> Addict trolls. <laughs> I used daily for five years meth. Will I ever completely recover? Ah, that's a dang good question. Completely recover? You sound like a meth addict. I was a meth addict. Uh, there is five stages of addiction. And the fifth, and or there's some people say there's six. Like, okay, you're recovered. You're good to go. Uh, I hold to the position that you are never recovered in the fact that you can never use substances again. There, I, I can never grow back to drinking alcohol again. I've been like a guy that got my legs cut off, right? They're never going to grow back. Once we have an, us addicts, and the more you learn, the more you stick with us, you'll learn this type of stuff. We have an allergy to addiction, to substances, to alcohol, to meth. Once we use it, once that substance enters our body, we need and have to have more. It, it kicks off a thing called the phenomenon of craving, right? As soon as you have it, you have to get more. Every time 
and with meth for me, the addiction was kind of like this. Every time I sniffed Coke, my buddies were like, let's get some Coke, bro. Let's party. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I would do a line of Coke and I'm instantly on my phone looking for the meth dealer and I'm gone. I'm like, Hey, have fun sleeping Cokeheads. I'm out of here, you know, because it created that phenomenon of craving where I had to have more. And then I, and I just had to smoke meth, eat meth. And I almost got to the point of shooting meth if I didn't go to jail when I went to jail. Uh, but I had to eat it. I had to consume meth 24 hours a day until finally I got locked up for a year. Thank God. And the same way when I started drinking, once alcohol started taking that addictive nature with me, soon as I hit my mouth, I would say, I'm only going to have a half a pint tonight. I'm only going to drink a little bit. I'm going to limit myself. As soon as it hit me, I was drinking until I ran out or I passed out. But got to vote for Bush trolleys, Bush trolleys, trolleys, Bush trolleys. trolleys. <laughs> fence sitters, <laughs> uh, scroller troller. <laughs> Scroller Scroll, trolls. Scroller trolls. I like that one. <laughs> it says, but I feel like I made me a little lazier. Well, if you, I, I'm going to post a video to my YouTube page here shortly. I got some videos that I've been working on compiling. Uh, and Dustin Hawkins, the guy that is the founder here at SOAR, he went through an awesome thing, a little uh, graph that shows us using drugs, right? He, he did a baseline of our normal feeling, our normal attitude where we feel just like, you know, just normal, da, 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 just going through my day. It's my normal baseline of my emotions, right? Then we use drugs. Whoosh. We go way high, right? We're on top of cloud nine, happy and loving it. And when we come back down off that drug, we hit normal again. Everything's similar, you know, everything's semi fine. And then we use drugs again. Woo. We go back up, but not quite as high. And this time when we come down, we drop a little below that line into a little bit of sadness, weakness, and depression. And the next time you get high, it goes up, but not quite as high as the second and third line, right? And the graph just starts to flip. And when you come down this time, you block way below your normal baseline emotional level. You end up into depression, a little worse, right? And the next time you get high, and then it just keeps going worse until finally you're way down here. If you're not using drugs, you're sluggish, dead. Your emotions are gone, sometimes suicidal. And you're using drugs, boop, just to barely bake it back to normal. And I was thinking about this thing that he did on top of it, the graph going this way and you having to use drugs just to fill normal baseline, the amount of drugs you have to use, the tolerance level you have to do just to increase that mood change is significant too. Yeah. Bob says, once a pickle, you can never turn back into a cucumber. 100%. And we... hello to Rophelia. She's not hey. an addict troll, just a listener. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> We brought some of the bush dwellers out. <laughs> Shy addicts. Bench warmers? Bench warmers. <laughs> Put me in, coach. <laughs> I love that. That's a good one. I'm glad you're watching, dude. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. We don't get many uh, Periscope watchers. I got Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. Um, I'm happy to see somebody chime in from that sign knowing that we can help out i try to put our our media on as many platforms as possible to hopefully reach and inspire like i said what we do is we live a life to inspire hope to people who are addicts and bob is right you cannot turn back into a cucumber 100 percent soupy uh, teeter says shadow critters digital <laughs> hiders <laughs> third stringers <laughs> Third Taxi string. squad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, you're our coach. Oh, thanks, coach. <laughs> That's awesome. Sure, you're in. <laughs> hey, All Sean. right. Glad you're here. Ready for the little test? So, one. This is the commonalities that all disorders have. One, a pattern of out of control behavior, meaning that. They are not able to predict their use once they engage in the substance or behavior, and they're not willing to stop the use. You ever been there? Number two, negative consequences due to behavior. Number three, the inability to stop despite the negative consequences. An increase in tolerance and amounts of indulgence. That's what we were just talking about a little bit ago. The need to use or engage more to get the desired effect. And then at number five is preoccupation. 
The anticipation of involvement in or reflection about their addictive behavior is the focus of their thoughts and feelings. And then number six, denial. Minimization, rationalization, denial of their behavior as a problem permeates their thinking to the point of a delusional thinking. We just went through two books that talked about all that. So have you experienced any of those? And that is the commonalities between any type of addictive behavior from sex, gambling, eating, uh, and all the drug use substances. Addictive obsession can exist in whatever generates significant mood alterations, whether it is the self-nurturing of food, the excitement of gambling, or the intoxication of alcohol and other drugs. Yes, he's, he's just pointed in you. You don't even have Periscope on your banner. Dang it. You're right, dude. We'll color it in with white Sharpie. <laughs> Give me a marker. <laughs> I got Sharpies at home. <laughs> uh, I got a vote. Or a hushed squad. Hushed squad. Or shadow scrolls. <laughs> Apologies in advance, weavers. You are stuck with me. Oh, you're my Aussie it. sister. Yeah, you're our family, family in Australia. When I come over to set up a recovering addict chapter in Australia, I need you, Des, and Obs. To be the leaders and runners of it. Uh, silencers. Silencers. <laughs> Here's a nugget. Film builder and friends on YouTube. Animated progression of addiction. Very powerful short video. Awesome. Right drop now. drop us a link on Discord or something so we can share that out. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got to do that. Oh, we got Mary. My first sponsor. Rooms Recovery needed to not share in meetings a few months Learn how to genuinely listen to members, share rooms, recovery. When introduce myself in meeting state, recovering alcoholic. Remind myself daily reprieve, lifetime. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Thank you for your comments. I'm glad you're here. It's a cute little dog picture too. Millie would freak out if she saw that. <laughs> yeah, genuinely listen. Glad, glad the listeners are out there. Yeah, genuinely listening is a good thing. I love it. Genuine listeners. Oh, that'd be a good one. Let's go on the positive side. Good job, guys, making fun of people. <laughs> it's not digital bush dwellers. It's genuine listeners. Mary genuine wins. Listener bush dwellers. Now, how do y'all feel? <laughs> <laughs> Let me flip that one on you. Hush puppies. <laughs> good night, Josh. Uh, hush puppies is cool. Hey, good night. Yep. Oh, school. Oh, you're right. It is school day tomorrow. Much love, brother. Yes, welcome, Mary. Okay, so now, so we learned what we're talking about, right? Addicts, addicts are, you know, they're out of control. Us, me, 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 me. Uh, we looked at the commonalities of all addiction, you know, out of control behavior, unable to stop, even though it's ruining your life and denial, those kind of things, right? Your mind is preoccupied with it as well. Uh, co addiction. Now we're going to get into co addiction. It says, irrespective of the substance or the object, of the addiction, the behavior of the co-addict parent follows very common routes as well. In earlier writings, spouses and partners of the alcoholics referred to as the co-alcoholics. That's what they used to call them. Today, they are more commonly thought of as codependents or co-addicts. Originally, the prefix co was used to describe a marriage partner who had become increasingly preoccupied with the behavior of the addict and the functioned in the role of primate primary enabler. So they were preoccupied with the, the alcoholics addiction. Ah, what are they doing? But then they were the primary enabler in this relationship. It now encompasses the dynamic of giving up a sense of self or experiencing a diminished sense of self in re in reaction to an addictive system. So typically the codependent or the co-addict experience involves these six things a uh, loss of sense of self how they feel and what they need number two being obsessed with another person who facilitates not dealing with own life reacting to someone else's behavior instead of acting from personal motives number four being all consumed with another and putting own priorities on hold number five taking responsibility for other people tasks and situations and then number six is engaging in the denial system always ends in denial excuse me 
Now, this part hit me. I never thought about this part of the co addict's effect on the family. It says, for children in the family, the combination of addiction and co-addiction results in neither parent being responsible and available on a consistent, predictable basis. Children are affected not only by the addicted parent, but also by the non-addicted parent and by the unhealthy family dynamics created as a consequence of living in an addictive system. It becomes a family system, the addiction. My addiction consuming me and all I care about is my addiction. Her worried about me and then being the primary enabler. And then the kids being neglected by both of us being preoccupied with addiction. Unknowingly denying it the whole time. <laughs> Crazy. Megan Williams, we are talking about It Will Never Happen to Me. This book is in the in the uh, links in the description if you'd like to grab yourself a copy. Uh, it's by Claudia ba Black, and it's about growing up with addiction as youngsters, adolescents, and adults. Right now, this is just the introduction to the book. We're clarifying some points. What are we speaking of when we say alcoholic, addict, or substance abuse? We looked at the commonalities between all addictions. We just read a blurb on what co-addiction looks like and how it affects the family as a whole. And now we're going to get into the children. Yeah. I think I was like co-addicted to you while codependent to Link. And I feel bad for Millie because I know a lot of like her stuff with school is a lot my fault because I kind of pushed her to the side. Yeah. And then the other kids are affected. Yeah. That's a kids. whole nother issue. <laughs> <laughs> I had two like co-things going on at one time. Poor Millie. Read Bob's <laughs> I am done enabling. Finish. Good for you, Bob. Good job, Bob. Over. She threatened to kill me the other day. Ooh, twice, actually. Bust my bedroom door down one last time while I was off at a meeting. She's out 86th. Done over. Yeah, man, that's just unacceptable. You do not need to be treated like that. I can just, from the little bit I've got to know you, you're, you seem like a very genuine person. And, and I'm glad that you, you noticed the enabling because that's one thing is like you don't Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize I was doing it till I started doing research on what it was. Yeah. And then to come out of it's pretty hard. So I'm proud of you, Bob. Proud All right. So I'm going to bust through this really quick. We're going to go through this little part on page four and five about the children. And then I really want to read these stories in chapter one. There's only three and it's a vignettes. It's a brief evocative description, an account or an episode, a vignette. Uh, children, as of 2001, the National Association of Children of Alcoholics has reported 76 million Americans, about 43% of the U.S. adult population, have been exposed to alcoholism in the family. Almost one in five adult Americans, 18%, lived with an alcoholic while growing up. There are an estimated 26.8 million children of alcoholics in the United States. Preliminary research suggests that over 11 million of these children are under the age of 18 compared to the children of non-alcoholics. Everybody's affected by addiction in some way or another. Anybody I've ever talked to in my entire life, I swear to God, knows somebody that is affected and it affects their heart to some measure. Uh, there are more at risk. So those like me that were raised like that, they are more at risk for alcoholism and other drug abuse. They are more likely to marry into families in which alcoholism is pre pre prevalent. We also recognize clinical that adults, they experience a subset of behaviors related to shame-based beliefs that create depression, victimization, rage, and lack of meaning in their lives, while children from difficult environments often show much resilient. For many, it is a very high price. One of the gifts of which we have come to learn about people raised in chemically dependent families is that it has offered extremely useful information for people raised in other types of troubled families as well. Whether or not you are raised in the addicted family system, it'll never happen to me, may very well offer a framework to understand your situation. We have long recognized that people raised with physical and sexual abuse strongly identify as if they were raised with addiction. So this book is offering to help you even because the similarities between addiction is the same as trauma and abuse in a family. The same type of mindset and mentality comes out of those relationships. Yes, Jeanette. Hashtag breaking the cycle. 
Amen. We all have a daily reprieve contingent contingent on our spiritual maintenance. Amen. I love that. As a reprieve state. Yes. Amen. I love it. Wouldn't want to be you. She burned her last relationship as the last stop on the block. Well, maybe she'll learn now or learn when she goes to prison. How to be supportive of a child with the addiction without being an enabler. That's so tough. your kid is an addict, I take it, Melissa? Is that what you're saying? And you're trying not to enable? Bob's in that situation, too. I'm going to save chapter one, the vignettes for Latin, for next time. We are at nine o'clock. Uh, John V is telling me it's time to pray. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want y'all to be bored with what we're talking about and not really be able to... I don't know. Maybe we should read it. Should we read it or not? Work in school tomorrow. You're right, bud. Okay. We're going to save chapter one, the vignettes. A vignette is a brief evocative description account or an episode. It gives three vignettes that are pretty powerful. And we will get into those Tuesday at eight o'clock. He said I can remove and repost. That's okay. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. No, no. No peace in Bob's house yet. Save it, Jeanette says. David, you're welcome very much. Uh, Greet your sister. Let's pray. Tuesday from Soupy. Well, as I I gave you an article that helped me, might help you. It can apply to kids and other drugs, not just alcohol. But it opened my eyes, that's for sure, especially when it comes to enabling. Whoops, sorry. Sorry, John. I said the wrong one. All right. Where's Millie? She didn't want to. Ready? God, grant Grant me the serenity serenity to accept accept the things things I cannot cannot change, change, the courage to change the things I can, and the the wisdom wisdom to know the the difference. And thank you, God, for being who you are and the creator and sustainer of the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And shout out to Link's new hair. (laughs) We recover better together by staying safe, staying sane, staying strong, and staying sober. You're worth it. Good night, family. Love you all, John says. And thank you all for being here. Sun Ray, much peace to you, brother. I'm glad you're back. Glad you're happy. Glad you're doing good. Uh, Join us in Discord. Make sure you guys hit that like button on the way out. Share this video out as well if you learned. And if you gained value, please do hit that uh, button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, Tuesday, we will be back going through Chapter 1. It will never happen to me. I'm excited. This is a good book. I'm already excited just from the introduction of it. Man, alive. We're going to learn some stuff here, aren't we? Uh, and then we can carry that hope. Remember to be a light of hope and a beacon. Remember tomorrow, do uh, the first person you meet, leave that person better off for having met you that day. And if they know you, leave that person better off for being in your presence. Be a beacon of hope and a beacon of light tomorrow. And until Tuesday, do not put yourself in a high-risk situation. Stay strong, work your programs, and remember, we, we recover, recover better, better together. together.